Oh, he's dropped it. Well, would you believe it? He's found the outside edge. That was the plan. Straight to Javid, and he shelled it out. Well, Javid, it has a few problems coming into this match with a sprained wrist. He's had it in a splint. And of all the men on the field to go to, Javid, normally one of the best fielders in the Pakistani side. So the catch is going down. It's followed the Pakistan side now to Australia. And at a vital stage in this test match, this is how it happened. It's good delivery and a straightforward one from Javid. He had his eye on it all the way. It obviously didn't hit the middle of his hands. And look at the reaction of the bowler. He's been bowling for that and found the outside edge. That is very frustrating. Oh, and that's a good bouncer. But once again, as he sticks that bouncer in, so he stretches his front foot forward and over the line he goes. Now, that was a better one. It was very straight and it certainly had Taylor pulling his head out of the way very quickly. It reinforces the thought that this young man is a very talented young bowler, very fast, and that is just about perfection in the bouncer. He will have taken some confidence too in Taylor taking his eye away. Oh, he's hit him. That, he went wide on that occasion and that really must have hurt him. It's hit him straight on the elbow Yes, and uh, quite rightly, look at this. In two minds, whether to go down, whether to play, and I mean, sheer pace did him, had him in two minds, and that coming about for some earlier dis deliveries. And have a look at this. Beautiful action, very quick arm action, and that delivery, just a delivery or two before, straight over the top of middle stump, had him ducking, and that one just the right height, about ribcage high, And a shout there, and he's given. Well taken by Salim Yusuf. And that's uh, a good reward for some excellent bowling. So the, uh, the move of coming around the wicket to the right-hander has worked for Wazim Akram. They desperately needed that wicket. Marsh getting a thick edge on this one. The ball angling in a long way, and then just holding up a little bit of magnificent delivery, really. It's hard to get them to move when you bowl at that sort of angle. It hit the outside edge, nicely taken and uh, Marsh is out. He really has struggled through this innings. So now they've got a new batsman in. It's a new ball game for them as David Boone takes guard. It's getting very warm here in Melbourne. Bright, sunny afternoon. It's going to be hard work for the bowlers. Out. And the reason for that is that he was coming around the wicket, slanting in to David Boone. And that is absolutely fatal, just to shove your pads at the ball these days, the way the OBW law is. Yes, the law says you must play a shot and strike your outside line. He's around the wicket, and that's going to certainly hit middle and off. And Wazam Akram's on a hat-trick at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, and all of a sudden it's two for 90, and the 16 or 17,000 people here now on the edge of their seats. Boone out for a duck, first ball. It's 2 for 92, 43 overs gone. This is the hat-trick ball. And uh, for Alan Border, there's going to be four slips and a goal in a short leg. It could be a wonderful moment for Wasm Akram in the Melbourne cricket ground. Well, you won't be any closer to a hat-trick than that in your life, my boy. What more can you do? He's beaten the outside edge all day. He's got Alan Border playing and missing, went straight through to the keeper. Played inside it, in fact, trying to find the outside edge. Was a from misses out on a hat trick. Got him! Got him. He's out. Caught the slip. Was he Macram has struck. He has got the vital wicket of Alan Border, and boy, the Pakistanis know that that was a major breakthrough. One of the toughest men in cricket to get out has been dismissed. Caught third slip. Yes, and well caught by Javid. Javid was responsible for dropping one early in the day. He dropped Mark Taylor, but that one was waist height, and he was delighted to snare that. And was Macram knew best. He stayed around the wicket to Alan Border and eventually got the Australian skipper. So he's out for 24. Caught Javid, bowled Akram, and Australia now slump to 6 for 148. Close. He's got him, yes, what a bowler, what a beautiful bowler. 
the bouncers and then the full length swinging in. Peter Sweep plumb in front. And that's the wicket they needed with the old ball on the 84th over. It was a fine piece of bowling. Softened him up with a short one, although it was a no ball. It, uh, it pushed Sleep onto the back foot. And then he beat him completely with the what was an attempted Yorker. But was always going to hit the stumps. And what a happy man he is. Australia, 7 for 201. That's a catch. Oh, he's gone. Caught a first slip. And a real muck up by Yusuf. But Swift was there. Took the catch. That's a superb piece of bowling. Five for Wazamak for him. This is a great man in action. Yes, Salim Yusuf would do better to just concentrate on his wicket keeping because he really made a mess of this. And uh, after such a fine piece of bowling, it would have been a tragedy to uh, mess that up. But Mansur Akhtar had slipped around behind Salim Yusuf. So for the sixth time in his career, Wazim Akram has five in an innings. Australia, eight for 223. Terry Alderman makes his way to the crease. Out! Yes, that's out. Well bowled, beautiful piece of bowling. Short leg, took a step back, then come forward. Six for Wazim Akram. He's the best fast bowler we've seen for some time. Or Bill, 15 wickets at uh, the Gabba. Richard Hadley, I'll just remind you of what you were saying on that occasion. But uh, this has been a magnificent spell from Wazim Akram. He's now got six. Terry Alderman wasn't going to do any further damage to his legs. And Australia are nine for 223. Carl Rackerman. He knows he's going to go back to the dressing room, but how soon? That's the question. Beautifully bowl. Bit too much bounce there for Wazim Akram's liking. Oh, that's a beautiful delivery. Was they aware that uh, Taylor likes to pull and hook? And that was a great delivery early on. That was a similar one that got him into trouble before. In the first innings, a couple of bounces over the head, and then one he just couldn't get out of the road look at the line of that is just about perfect over middle and leg stump wasn't Akram to continue no. that ball call huh? well that was uh, either brave or foolhardy on David Burns part because I don't think he would have got the call before he decided to play no stroke Oh, no, why wasn't Macklin was upset? That would have been out. Gone for all money. The second time in two days. The no ball call saved David Boone. Well, just a question of whether he caught it. Well, if there was an edge, it was certainly a bottom edge. Oh, how close can you go? Well, they wouldn't say it was Macram's luck is getting any better. Just a little shake of the head, walks back to his mark. What a magnificent delivery. What do you have, one over's rest? And Dean Jones can consider himself very, very fortunate not to have made a first ball duck in both innings of this test match. Close, got him! Good bowling, going around the wicket, squared him up. Well, that must have held its line because Jones seemed to be on the pop increase, but the line was there, Jones not happy with that decision. The umpire is Rick Evans. Oh, I don't think Dean showed any real disappointment. I think that's fair enough. I think it might have hit leg stump. Umpire Evans certainly thought it did. Would have, sorry. And he had no hesitation whatsoever. Get Australia 4 for 216. Steve Waugh makes his way to the ground. Well, what a turnaround. Oh, no! And there is a wicket. Well, War is out. Akram does it again. And what a great bowler. Let's have a look at that one again in relay. 
Thanks, back Mac. to the central commentary position. Thanks, Max. Yes, it's happening. What a bowl. He's tested Steve Waugh out. You could see it was on. The pressure was applied. They didn't bring in an extra slip. He drops it short. He plays and tries to draw away. Gets a touch and Waugh is gone. Five for 220. Peter Sloop comes out. Attacking field. Oh! Bowl him! What a yorker! Straight through Peter Sloop. A hat-trick for Wazamakram. Oh, what a performance. It's a joy to watch. He hasn't got a hat-trick yet, Bill, but he's on a hat-trick. I can tell you that. He's on a hat-trick. And uh, Ian Healy's the next man in. Look at this for a delivery. That's a Yorker on Lake Stump. May have just flicked the toe on the way past. Sleepy could do nothing about that. This man is G-R-E-A-T. Great. I love him. I reckon he's the best bowler I've seen for years. Australia now, 6 for 220. He's on an hat-trick. In he comes. Oh, he's hit him on the foot and it's gone down two fine legs. So it was going down the leg side. Leg by signaled. He certainly is a tremendous performance. Oh, he's hit that in the air and he's going to go out exactly the same way as he did in the first innings. Out court and Akram points down towards the pavilion. That is the end of Ian Healy. Well, he did find a bit of extra pace. He didn't like being hooked for four. And the extra pace caught Ian Healy. And that's out. Merv didn't quite know where it was go uh, going. Wazi Makram did. The man at short leg had no idea. He was uh, starting to drift away from it. Merv Hughes has gone. Out to a bouncer after a very good innings. Drinks will be taken. Oh, five times. Wicket. Magnificent. Two times five in the match. 11 wickets so far. Tremendous performance by this young man. Courage, stamina, determination. And a great fighting knock of 32 from the big Victorian Merv Hughes. Australia 8 for 305.